Now that we've cooled down from the Arizona heat, we're here to give you all the updates on USC sports. From football's dominant win in the desert to volleyball smackdown in Stanford, we've got you covered. Sports scene starts now. <laughs> Coming at you from Studio C in the Leslie Moonves, Julie Chen, CBS Media Center, welcome to Sports Scene. I'm Kristen Lago. And I'm Keely Yor. The number 17 USC football team bounced back with a strong 42-14 road victory over Arizona State on Saturday. Kristen, it was almost like we saw a completely different team out there. What were your takeaways from the game? Yeah, definitely. At ASU, we saw a Trojan team transformed, especially on the defensive side. Against Stanford, the Trojans could barely hold their own on defense, allowing the Cardinal over 470 yards, and that's with no interceptions. This week at ASU, we saw John Plattenberg kick things off with an interception that turned into a scoring drive. Chris Hawkins with the great fumble recovery for a touchdown. And on top of that, the offense looked comfortable on the field. The prime example of that being Adoree Jackson, who had 131 yards and an 80-yard touchdown play. But coming off of this big road win, the Trojans will now have a week to prepare for their next game against Washington. Keely, what do the Trojans need to do to improve during this bye week? Well, this was the second week in a row that penalties were a problem for the Trojans. USC had 10 penalties for 91 yards, which came at critical moments in drives. But this is something you can't have going forward, especially now that the Trojans are getting into the heart of their schedule. So USC really needs to clean that up. Also, USC's defense had trouble stopping the run. Demario Richards ran for over 131 yards, including a 61-yard run to begin the game. So USC needs to find a way to stop powerful backs like they saw with Richards and Christian McCaffrey in the Stanford game. I definitely agree. And the Trojans will welcome the next 12 days to rest up and prepare for a tough upcoming schedule both at home and on the road. The timing was good, and we're just trying to take advantage of it. One, to get better, but two, to get ourselves prepared to go for the next week. I think definitely the offense is doing a great job now moving the ball and everybody's coming together as a team and a unit and meshing together. One player who will certainly enjoy the short break is over on the couch with Keeley now. Thanks Kristen. I'm joined by redshirt senior linebacker and captain Anthony Cerro. How are you doing today? I can't complain. Good practice today. Yeah. So it was an important win over ASU in the mm -hmm. desert. How important was it after having a loss to Stanford? It was very important. I mean that, that was a good game. We had a lot of fun out there but main part was good just to get back and respond, you know, you face a lot of adversity in football and it, it, it shows a lot of our team, it shows a lot of our character to come back and win that game, how we win it, so we did. There seemed to be a lot of fire and energy in the yeah. defense. What adjustments did you make from Stanford to ASU? Um, I think we just showed up. We just showed up and we, and we played how we know we can play. I mean, that's what we do. I mean, we put it on the field, we put it on film, and, and we're going to continue to do that. We just got to be able to come and prepare, trust our scheme, and just play. Yeah, speaking of preparing, how what is the team doing during the, the bye week to improve? Um, we're working hard. I mean, we're getting back to the fundamentals more. Like today in practice, it wasn't anything to do with Washington or anything. Um, it was just straight back to fundamentals, still hitting full pads, working hard. So we're getting to it. What fin fundamentals are you working on? Um, we're just getting back to the basics, a lot of tackling drills, um, a lot of turnover drills, special teams we went to those type of drills, so it was good. You're a part of a very talented linebacking group, mm -hmm. and with a lot of young freshmen like Cameron Smith and mm -hmm. Porter Gustin, what have you seen from them? Um, I've seen a lot from them, man. They, we have such a versatile group. It, it, it's exciting to watch everybody play and, and see how the coaches move around and, and let us use our best abilities. And it's funny. I mean, I can't wait to see those guys get older in the future and play. Now that you're a captain on the team, mm -hmm. how has your role changed with the guys? Um, It, it changed more because of entitlement, but I think my role is still the same. I mean, I still act the same. I'm, still do the same things that I do. I mean, that's just a title type of thing, you know, that they put. But, you know, I'm still leading the way I want to lead and still trying to make the plays I want to make and just continue to try to win. The buzzword of fall yeah. camp was platooning. and There's a lot yeah. of platooning on the defense. Mm -hmm. Is that efficient? Do you like platooning? Um, it, it definitely makes you feel better. I'm not going to lie, because last year we were playing a lot of snaps around. Some games even 100 snaps for players. So this year when we get to break it down to 30, 40, 50 snaps, it's just, this is going to help us out throughout the season. I mean, towards the end of the season, we'll be, be, be fresh. And other teams won't be, so it's good. Do you think it's beneficial for the young guys on the defense, too, to get more reps? Yeah, I think it's beneficial. I mean, especially in the early games, it was it was nice to get everybody in because you don't want to put them guys in the game where it's so such crucial times. You want to be able to let them get their feet wet and, and do what they have to do. This is your final season yeah. as a USC Trojan. What are you trying to get out of your final time here? 
Um, I'm just trying to win, man. I, I feel like um, we we haven't win. I mean, we had good, we had good seasons, but I think this is a special team, and I just want to win. I just want to go out with a bang and, and make the best of it. All right. Well, thanks for joining me today. Yeah. You can catch Anthony and the rest of the football team next Thursday when USC plays University of Washington mm -hmm. at the Coliseum. Now over to Kristen at the monitor to break down how the rest of the Pac-12 is doing this season. Thanks, Keeley. At the beginning of this season, Pac-12 play seemed all too predictable. But we here at Sports Scene are the first to admit that college football isn't always what it seems. I'm joined now by Aaron Glazer to break down this week in the Pac. Welcome, Aaron. Thanks for being here. Thank you. And it was a big week of games in the Pac-12 South as statements were made and championship contenders became a bit more obvious. So tell me, Aaron, what went down this week? Well, we first have to look at what went down in Tucson on college game day between the UCLA Bruins and the Arizona Wildcats. Freshman quarterback Josh Rosen, everyone wonders, when will he crack? When will something happen? Wasn't this week. Wildcats got thrashed, 56-30 by the Bruins in the desert, moving the Bruins up to number seven in the AP polls, which is only one spot lower than where the Trojans were before the Stanford game. Rosen throwing for 284 yards and two touchdowns in that game in Tucson. So it's clear UCLA is going to be one to watch this season, but I also hear another Pac-12 South team really stepped it up this week. Yeah, this week the Utah Utes came out in Eugene, where notoriously Autzen Stadium is unbeatable for road teams. The Ducks played tremendously well there, but they lost 62-20. to The Ducks had a rushing attack of under 80 yards, and Utah made a serious dent in the team that was only a year ago rode Marcus Mariota's strong arm to the national championship. Very alarming to the folks up in Eugene. Meanwhile, the Utes are now in the top 10, supping the play. They're coming to the Coliseum end of October. Well, thank you, Aaron, for being here and breaking that down for us. Next week, the Pac-12 is sure to bring even more surprises in a series of big games as UCLA takes on ASU and Oregon travels to Colorado. And now switching gears, USC football isn't the only team on campus who took care of business this weekend. Let's toss it over to Keeley at the desk for a women's soccer update. Thanks, Kristen. I'm joined now by Jackson Safan and Cooper Perkins to discuss the USC women's soccer team. The winner of Troy opened up Pac-12 play this past weekend, defeating Oregon State 2-1 and are now 6-3-1. So guys, what are the biggest takeaways from Saturday's game? Well, I thought USC really dominated Oregon State in all facets of the game. They outshot them 23-6 and the defense really played well, obviously, only allowing six total shots on Oregon State. And USC goaltender Sammy Joe, she only had to make one save in the game. So the defense is really good, but the highlight was definitely Sidney Johnson. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned the defense. We've known about that all season, but Sidney Johnson seems to be keeping things together on offense. Four goals in just eight games, six shots. That efficiency is absolutely wild. The next closest score on the Trojan side, just two goals. How do you think they can incorporate her more going into the season? Well, having no starts, I mean, they just got to get her in the game more often. I think she should be starting, but then again, I'm not going not gonna to say what Coach McAlpine says is wrong. She's really been efficient off the bench, so you've got to keep her in her role doing that, I think. Yes, yeah, speaking of the offense, this is an offensive-minded team, and yet they've been struggling to get any points on the board. Head coach Kadani McAlpine says that the team is averaging a lot of shots, but don't have a lot to show for it. Yeah, that's been our average in the last uh, last handful of games. Uh, I guess we got to have that many to, to put a few on the board, but uh, I'd like us to still be a little bit more efficient on that end, uh, especially with, with the quality of the chances that we're creating. So guys, why do you think the team is having so much trouble scoring? You know, Keely, I think that's a really difficult question to answer because the opportunities are there. More than 16 shots a game where their opponents are only right around six, so they're in position to win every game that they go out to play, but they're just not finishing those opportunities. I'm really looking at Morgan Andrews as someone who needs to step up her game. She's a former All-American transferred from Notre Dame, just joining the women of Troy this season, but she only has two goals, and they're both on penalty kicks on 39 shots. So she's shooting less than 5%, and the offense runs through her. So in order for them to start finishing those chances, I think she needs to step up her leadership a little bit. Absolutely. On those 39 shots, only 11 of them have even been on target, so her accuracy just has been a little bit off to start the season. Like Cooper said, averaging over 16 shots a game for the team, but they're only averaging 1.3 goals, so, so the efficiency really needs to improve coming in, up against the teams this week. Yeah, speaking of the teams, they're going up against USC Heads North this week to face the Washington schools. And an interesting fact, Coach Kadani and most of the staff at Washington State prior to coming to USC last year. Kadani says that he's just now starting to feel at home. Uh, well, last year, last year was was difficult. I'm not gonna lie. I yelled some of the wrong names at times. It was crazy. But uh, now that I've got that under my belt, I think it's gonna be a little bit easier this time to go up and just feel comfortable coaching this team. We've come a long way, but it's you know it's always good to go up and, and see some old friends and, and see some players that you spend a lot of time with and you still love. Uh, you want them to do well, just not too well when we play. <laughs> so, guys, what do you think the keys will be against the Washington schools? 
Well, I think it's going to be really exciting. This is not Coach McAlpine's first trip with Washington State. We know he coached there. They actually beat them last season, beat both the Washington schools. So they'll get a second crack at him now from the other side. I know, Jackson, you have a few points that are really a little bit more integrated into you know, maybe a game plan perspective. Absolutely. Wazoo and UW both only have one loss in the season and eight wins. Wazoo is 8-1. UW is 8-2-1. Eight, sorry, eight, two and one. And Courtney Gutlin for Wazoo and Shannon Simon for UW are both top six in the conference in points per game. So they've been really scoring at an efficient rate, similar to Sidney Johnson. So those two are definitely going to be the, the two players that USC needs to focus on defensively. Yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see how the women of Tro Troy do as they hit the road this week. Now we take it over to Haley as she lights the torch. Thanks, Keely. It's time to give you the latest on the sports world around campus. It's time to light the torch. Starting things on the hardwood, the number two ranked women's volleyball team faced a scare for the first time this season when they beat number eight Stanford in five sets on Sunday. The women of Troy moved to 16-0 on the season, good for their best start since 2006. Senior outside hitter Samantha Bricio was unstoppable, scoring a career-high 34 points. Bricio powered the team through scoring 13 of her 27 kills in the fourth and fifth sets. In the pool, the number three ranked men's water polo team opened conference play with a sound beating of Long Beach State with a score of 17 to 9. The Trojans are looking to avenge a previous loss to number two Stanford when they face off again Saturday. The Cardinal took down the Trojans 6 to 5 last week in the semifinal game of the Cap 7 NorCal Invitational. Well, the torch is lit, USC sports are hot. Now let's see who else is hot with Savannah in the Media Center. Thanks, Haley. The USC football players weren't the only ones having fun in the desert this weekend. We're bringing you the top fan photos from Tempe. Even though the former great USC running back Lensdale White was escorted out of the Coliseum last season, Thunder made his presence known by snapping this great shot with some fans. White wasn't the only former Trojan in attendance. Former USC linebacker Devin Kennard was in the crowd soaking up the sun with some of his family. And back on campus, Traditions had a big viewing party for fans that couldn't make the trip to ASU. There's Tommy Trojan himself. Even the 106 degree heat couldn't kill the good vibes and guided USC to a win. That's all I've got. Back to you, Kristen. Thanks, Savannah. While the fans were able to have fun during the game, it was the players' turn to celebrate after. And who better than a Dory Jackson to steal the show? While Jackson was waiting to lead the USC marching band, one ASU fan decided to taunt the USC corner. But Jackson's performance off the field was just as good as his on-field, and he, as he remained unfazed and laughed it off. And that's all for us here at Sports Scene. I'm Kristen Lago. And I'm Keely Orr. Be sure to tune in next week as we look into Sark's matchup with his foreman team and women's soccer returns home. Have a good week. We're not, we're not, we're not, we're not.